The ability to create sketches that are stable and predictable in Autodesk Inventor is a foundational skill. In this video, I'll give you five tips to creating great sketches, and at the end, I'll also show you a couple of troubleshooting tips for those sketches that are difficult to fully constrain. Since most parts in Inventor begin with a sketch, you'll want to get really good at creating sketches. Follow these five steps to create good sketches. Number one, the first thing that you want to do is establish the sketch plane. The second thing that you want to do is to project existing or origin geometry to that sketch as needed. Third, you'll sketch the profile approximately the correct size and shape. Then you'll apply geometric constraints and finally you'll add dimensional constraints. At the end, I'll give you two more tips on how to fully constrain those stubborn sketches. In the first step, you'll want to establish your sketch plane. Now, if this is the base sketch, the very first sketch in a part, it's likely that you'll be using one of the origin planes, x, y, x, z, or y, z. So if we look in Inventor, you'll see that if I come in here to create a new sketch, I get one of three choices. I can choose the x, y plane, the um, y, z plane, or the x, z plane. And it's simple. If I want my sketch to be a front view, I'm going to choose the x, y plane. If I want my sketch to be a side view, I'm going to choose the y, z plane. And if I want my sketch to be a top view, I'm going to choose the x, z plane. Pretty simple. On the other hand, if I'm going to be using um, an existing part and adding a new sketch to it, <clears throat> let's say for example, I've got this part, I could come in and say I want to create a new sketch and all I have to do is pick any one of the existing surfaces that are here or I could also still come in and pick my origin geometry depending on what I want to do. Okay, So it's as simple as picking any one of those surfaces. On the other hand, there might be times when you need to create um, a work plane. So if I wanted to create a sketch on the top of this cylinder, I can't do that. I can't come in and say I want a sketch on the top of this cylinder. It won't let me do it. So I'll create a work plane by choosing the work plane and then I'll say I want it parallel to the XZ plane at the top of this. So now I've created a sketch plane that is tangent to the top of that cylinder and I can now say I want a new sketch on that surface and it's ready to go. Okay, So very simple. Those are the three ways to establish your sketch plane. Your next step is to project existing or origin geometry. So looking back at this part that I was just working on, when I created my sketch it did apply the center point as origin geometry and it projected it to the sketch. If I wanted to, I could go to project geometry and I could also project the sides or the other parts of this you know, sketch or of the existing part to the sketch. One other thing that you can do is you can project that origin geometry as say a center line. So if I wanted that X axis as a center line, I could say let's change the line type to center line and I will project the X axis as a center line and it brings that x-axis into my sketch as a center line, which now I can use. The good thing about doing this is it capitalizes on the parametric nature of the program. Any geometry that I project from a part becomes um, a part of this new sketch, but if the other part, if the old surfaces are moved or changed for any reason, they update into the sketch and the sketch is parametric, parametrically updated. The next thing that you'll want to do is to create your sketch profile. So create your geometry approximately the correct, correct size and shape. You can use any of the sketch tools that you need, but you want to not include things like fillets and chamfers. Those will be put in as placed features later. And then finally, you want to make sure that your profile is closed. Because remember, open profiles don't produce solid geometry. They only produce surface geometry. So let's look at another option here, another, another sketch that we can create. If I look at this part right here, um, let's say I want to create a, a work plane. So I'll say I want a work plane 
from this surface and that edge, let's say rotated 30 degrees. I'll create a new sketch <clears throat> on that surface. And again, step that was step number one, establish my work plane. Step number two is I have the center point, okay, that is projected to there, but I also want to include that corner as sketch geometry. Now I could come in and I could pick the entire surface, but unless I need all of those lines, I don't recommend that you do an entire surface. Only pick the edges that you need. So step three now is to create your geometry approximately the right size and shape. So if I wanted a little humped feature that would come in here and maybe have like a, a circle like this and then come back down, I'm gonna create that sketch geometry approximately the right size and shape. Notice that as I sketched, it applied some of my constraints for me. It didn't apply all of them, but it did apply the ones that were uh, logically necessary and they persisted so that this is fairly stable. Do not include any tin or any fillets or chamfers or anything at this point. Step number four now is to come in and apply your geometric constraints. When you're applying these geometric constraints, you want to try to capture the design intent. What is it about this part that I want to be uh, consistent? For example, do I want these two edges to be aligned? Do I want the center of this circle to be at the center of that circle? Do I want these things to be collinear? Do I want the middle of this at the center of that? All those kinds of things. They add uh, value because it makes your sketch more predictable and you can capture that design intent. So look for those relationships. One note, do not use the fixed constraint. Don't do it. I wish they didn't even put it into Inventor. So looking at this, you know, my design intent is that this center point right here is right above that so that you know these two things are always aligned. So I would put in a vertical constraint between the center point of that arc and the, you know, the, the origin of the drawing. So that's now very predictable as far as you know how things are going to go. No matter what size I make it, it's always going to be the right size. Now if you want to delete one of those for some reason, you can simply right click on it and you can say let's delete that constraint. Right click. I don't know why it's not letting me delete the constraint. Let me, uh, if, I sh if I right click, I can say let's show my constraints. <clears throat> um, oh, I want to I want to show all my constraints. So now I can right click on that one and I can delete that. So now I'm back to, uh, and if I right click, I can hide those constraints. So now I'm back to not having this constraint fully. And, and I want that for the next step to kind of show the final step here. Step number five, after you've applied your geometric constraints is to apply the dimensional constraints. So those dimensional constraints are the numbers that, that tell the, the program how big your part should be. I suggest that you start with the largest dimensions and remember that the dimensions drive the geometry. So if you start with a small dimension, it could really mess up some of your other stuff. Start with your largest dimensions. Hopefully you've sketched it approximately the right size and shape. Keep the manufacturing process in mind because you want to try to apply the dimensions that the, 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 the manufacturing company will need when they begin to build this part. So again, looking back at this, for example, they will need to know the radius of this arc, so I can simply click on there and put it in point maybe 625. And I think, okay, now, the final thing that you wanna make sure is that your sketches are always fully constrained. If I look at this, this sketch is still missing two constraints. If you don't know what constraints are supposed to be applied, you can simply come in and you can try to deflect it by clicking on something and moving it around. And I can see that this is moving all over the place. So I can say, oh, it moves up and down. So maybe I need to know the length of this line. So for example, I can say, okay, from, from that line to the center of the circle, which is the length of that line, maybe that needs to be like 625 or whatever it happens to be. And I can say, okay, now it should be good to go, but it still hasn't been fully constrained. And if I come in here and I grip it, I can still move it back and forth. So if you can't figure out how to get your sketch fully constrained, here's two tips. Number one, 
right click your mouse and choose show degrees of freedom. You'll get some gizmos that pop up onto the screen that show you how all of the things that still can move, how they can move. And you can see that all of these points can move back and forth. So hopefully that'll be enough to go, oh, I just need to tell it where, you know, along this line it's supposed to be. So you could add the dimension, or like I said, you could add a, dimin a, a, a constraint between that point and that point, which is what I'll end up doing. If I want to get rid of those degrees of freedom, it's simply a right click and hide the dis or just uncheck display the degrees of freedom. Oops, escape, right click hide degrees, uh, all degrees of freedom and they all go away. If you've done that and you still can't figure out what's going on, the last thing that you can do is you can use the automatic dimension tool right here. Click on it and say apply and you'll see that it's going to apply a dimension and then it will fully constrain. Now this is like a last resort. At least you can see what the dimension is but I, I suggest that that's not the dimension that you would want for manufacturing purposes, but at least you can see what it is that's not supposed to be there. So then you could say remove it um, and say done. And now if you really wanted that dimension, you could come back in and you could say, I really want this one from there to there, right? And maybe it's going to be that one divided by two so that it, oh, well, not divided by two. What happened there? Um, but anyway, or you could... Uh, let me let me delete that right click and I'm gonna delete that dimension oops right click delete that dimension the one that I really wanted again was that vertical constraint between escape the vertical constraint between that point and that point and so that's it so that's what you're going to do so to finish this out <clears throat> you want to make sure that your sketches are fully constrained the three tips are display your degrees of freedom, right click that mouse, choose display dis degrees of freedom. The other things that you can do is you can click and drag to deflect those under constrained elements. Try to figure out what dimension it would be that you'd need to apply in order to fully constrain it. As a last resort you can use the automatic dimensioning tool but like I said you may need to undo that and replace the suggested dimension with the proper dimension. And that's it. If you follow these five steps you'll be creating Great sketches in no time. Thanks for watching.